Hey, Chris here at Midwest Long Range. Today we're looking at action screw torque and how it affects your groups at 50 and 100 yards. I've got my buddy Alex Spencer here with me. He's got his Voodoo 360 and a really cool setup. We're going to look at how it affects his gun and uh, see, you know, kind of what the ideal torque setting is for this particular setup. So stick with me. All right, Alex, explain to us what we're going to do on this deal. So one thing which I've seen, especially over on my CZ from whenever I've done testing, is as you go through and change your action screw, it'll actually go through and change the way in which the way that your rifle shoots. It'd make it either shoot better, it can make it shoot worse, it can uh, do multiple things. Uh, what you see a lot of people using now is barrel tuners. And barrel tuners go through and tune your harmonics, and then playing with action torque will do the exact same thing. So, uh, well, we'll do similar, my bad, not exactly the same thing. but. <laughs> Um, it will kind of go through and allow you to play around with it if you don't quite feel like spending the money over on it or maybe if you just don't want to go through and run a tuner. So it's just something that you can go through and that you can try. So it's something I'm going to be testing out today. Okay, so where are we going to, where do you have your gun set at now and where are we going to go? So right now I have it set for 50 yards. Uh, I'd like to go through and do 100, but it is a little bit windy over on out there. So it's kind of hard to really get any definitive results right now. Um, probably what I'll end up doing, I'll test over, over at 50 today. It's kind of good to demonstrate, you'll be able to kind of see a little bit of a difference. It's definitely a lot more exaggerated over at 100 yards. Mm -hmm. And so what I'll do is, uh, probably after this test, I'll take it up over to a indoor 100 yard range. I'll go to double check it. And if the results are the same, then I'll go to yeah. run with it. So Okay. So what torque setting are you going to start with? Uh, I'm probably going to go to start over at 35 for right now. And then I'll probably go to work my way up over in five inch pound increments. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll go to see what happens. So something which I'm going to go to uh, something that I like to do whenever I'm going through and changing my action torque, I'll actually take my rifle, I'll go through and I'll set it up, and then I will go through and loosen up the action screws. And whenever I loosen them up, I'm actually going to, while holding the rifle, I'm going to pick it up, and I'm actually going to drop it down over in stock. And so that way it goes through and sets up against the recoil lug of your 22 or whatever. And then I'll go through and kind of get somewhat kind of Somewhat tight. Kind of get it slightly hand tight. Switch over to my torque wrench. And over on this torque wrench, I actually have a veneer scale over on it, which you can go with. You can also use a Wheeler fat wrench or whatever. But this is just kind of what I like to go through and use. I like fix it sticks. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start out, I'm going to move on over till this veneer scale gets over to 35 inch pounds, which is right there. I like to do the front. Um, action screw first and then I'll do the rear um, you can kind of do it however which way that you want you just want to go to keep it consistent uh, while you're doing this so we got to get that somewhat tight and there's 35 so All right so now you should be able to go through and shoot a group uh, you shoot five you shoot ten really kind of the more's better but of course right now we're kind of over in the middle of a bad time so it's kind of hard to go through and replace ammunition so i'm probably going to only be doing five all right alex you can take your first group at 50 yards yes sir i'm probably going to go for the center first and then i'll probably go through and kind of work my way around over different corners yep you going on that top right uh yes i can go over the top right So now 40 inch pounds. Yep. We are recording. 
So I'm going to go ahead and go for the corner over on the left. Over on the... Uh, left point? Uh, left point, yeah. Left point over on the top right diamond. Sand it. Right. So right there you can see just over five inch pounds and how much difference that makes already. We're going to continue to proceed. All, where are you planning on stopping? Um, I'll probably go up to about 55. Um, I've, I'll see about 60, but I probably don't want to go to run 60. Mm -hmm. I, I think that may be a little bit too much for the action. So yep. I'll, I'll probably go up to 55 for sure. Depending over on how I'm feeling, depending over on how I'm shooting, I may go up to 60 just to see what's there, but it just kind of all depends. Okay. So, we're going to continue up the scale. I'll speed the video up a little bit so you don't get kind of bored with the minute details here and some of our chit chat. But we'll continue to show all the results as they come out. So like right there we come up another five inch pounds and we didn't even like i said to alex probably ain't worth burning the five rounds because there's no saving what no, was already there no, no it, it opened up a good amount so that's something to think about when you're when you're doing accuracy testing if your first two or three shots aren't real tight as hard as ammo is to get right yeah. now you might not might not burn them other two make make a change come back and and uh, use them on your next group don't don't waste your time on something that isn't savable <laughs> inch pounds and again you can see we're coming back into that harmonic node mm -hmm. even at 50 yards you see just how much dispersion that seen really is going on and over at 100 you could really tell the difference and you can tell whenever you have a really good node and so that kind of gives you a really yeah. good idea really all good of this would simply be exaggerated if we didn't have quite a bit of wind today we would be trying it that way <laughs> It looks like 35 and 40 is a good note. 40 is definitely the best of it. And then you get up over to 45 and it opens up uh, quite a bit. 50 starts to close. And then six, oh, over 55. 55. It's kind of closing up, but it's a little bit more linear. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So I guess probably what we'll end up doing is probably go up to 60 in, uh, inch pounds, like we were talking. So yeah. let's see what's up there. And if it does any better, that also I'll go ahead and keep an eye out and make sure that the action isn't binding or any of that other weird stuff. Cause oh, 
lightsaber. Uh oh. Nope. I got one more. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just wondering if maybe something funky. Uh, nope. no. Yep. She's splitting two yep. groups. <laughs> I was okay. When the third one come out, I was starting to think maybe yeah, right. it was a uh, a. Uh, I don't know. Well, maybe maybe that first one was a flyer or something. Well, I know what happens sometimes with the suppressor is that yeah. uh, you'll have some powder that will kind of run back down in the barrel. Because that first shot will kind of be like a weird one, and after that, they'll start grouping together. So, as you saw, sixty didn't work. No. Uh, we're Alex is gonna go ahead and break these loose. Take her back down to 40. Mm -hmm. You're gonna verify that group? Yep. We'll verify that and uh, might take a look at the wind, see what it's doing, and just see what that kind of group looks at at, at yep. 100 yep. maybe. If the wind's not too bad, we'll see. Are we back at 40 inch pounds? Uh, yes. All right. I'm gonna go for the. So where I went, you shot the one that was uh, 60 inch pounds? Yep. I'm going to. Uh, Go down over to the bottom corner, right below it. Got it. That's it. Hard to argue with that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So we just wrapped up our action torque test. Seems like Alex, you're going to settle in about 40 inch pounds. Yeah, yep, about 40 inch pounds. And that seems to be a really good node for his gun. It seems to be shooting well. Uh, that I don't know if y'all really paid attention to everything he had sitting there, but that's a that's a pretty sweet setup with a zero compromise, MDT ACC, mm -hmm. and of course a Voodoo. Uh, 360 barreled action and you're running the trigger tech diamond yes sir all right so with all that um, that gun's only going to continue to shoot better and better and better as he gets more rounds to yeah. it you get a little more time behind yeah. it yeah. so what what are kind of your thoughts on the test so uh, one of my uh, things I really like doing it is that it's a really good thing to go through and test out it really kind of helps you optimize your rifle mm -hmm. it's really kind of one of the best things you can do um, you know it's probably to be completely honest, probably a little bit overkill, especially for what we're doing with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like the NRL uh, 22 or like PI, uh, PRS 22 type of stuff. But uh, it's kind of nice to go through and have that peace of mind. And so that's kind of part of the reason that's why I like to go through and do it. Um, because this game isn't just about how your rifle shoots and whatever. It's also a mental game, too. And so that's kind of what this is. This is kind of one of those things where if I have my rifle set up to where I maximize it, I know that any time that... I go through, you know, anytime that I miss, it's not the rifle, it's my fault. It, exactly. I, I've said stuff like that at the shop several times. If if I have, and, I, and not to sound like a gear snob or mm -hmm. anything like that, but as long as I know I've bought quality components, quality parts, I've done everything I can to bring those parts together correctly mm -hmm. and ensure that I have the most accurate setup that I can put forward. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's all dependent on budget and everything. You yeah. know, I've eliminated that many variances from myself. Yeah. And that gives me a little fudge room in case I mess up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the rifle will help me get, I hate to say get lucky, but every once in a while, I, uh, I'll take it when it happens. Uh, um, oh, yesterday I was out playing around a little bit with some positional stuff. And so that's about a 20 pound 22. <laughs> and so, uh, whenever you step over the barricade, I don't even have to even be behind it. Like, I mean, I just go through and break a shot, and it it doesn't move whatsoever. <laughs> and so, it, I mean, it's like a laser beam. Uh, so, uh, Dalton Cassie, he's been over on uh, the channel before. Yep. Um, I was actually out there practicing with him. He has a uh, steel plate. It's about a quarter inch thick or so over at the end of a long chain. And so whenever you shoot it, it goes it moves around. Yeah, the, the, sw the swinging target. Yeah. Well, it was knife edge to me. I was over on a barricade. I was I went through not only hit uh, that uh, the edge of it, which is only a quarter inch thick, 
I also went to him hit it whenever it was moving over at one point in time over on the night. I, yeah, I wish I could have been there and got the, all that on camera. That would have been cool. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so guys, here's a test. You know, go out, try some of this stuff on your, your NRL rig or your PRS rimfire rig. And, uh, let you know, drop, drop us a comment. Let us know what your results are or what your thoughts are. We'd love to hear it. And uh, we'll catch up with you next time. Thanks for being, hanging in there with us. Yep.